Hey guys, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. Today I will show you around my ship. It's a huge ship. It's a 300 meters long ship. So today I will show you around this whole ship. Today I will show you only the outside, the accommodation. Uh, I will show you in another video. So uh, today I will cover the outside of the accommodation, the main deck, the hull of the ship, the the outside the the deck the the outside stores the station the forward part and the aft part the gangway these areas i will show and in another video i will show you inside the accommodation so let's get on with it This is one of the uh, doors you can say uh, towards the ex exterior accommodation. It, when you step out of your accommodation, uh, this is the, the port side or the left hand side to get to the, of the ship. And this is what it looks like when you just step outside of the accommodation. The, uh, this is the aft part or the uh, end part of the ship, and this is the forward part of the ship. So I will go forward first. And then I will go from the other side to the aft part. So let's go. This thing right here is called a light coil, and uh, its basic job is to, uh, you know, let uh, if anybody falls uh, overboard into the sea, if this thing floats, it's an inflatable light coil. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if this thing is, this thing floats, and uh, the person can grab onto it and can stay afloat for some time and this is connected with a light and a uh, line so this line you tie on the deck and you throw the light work and this light uh, by the help of this light at night the person uh, who has fallen into the sea can spot the light work so it basically it's self writing when it goes in water it will automatically write itself and it will show the light like this. This is the main deck, this is the sea and this is the extreme edge of the ship. We, I am walking on the port side that is uh, when you face the forward of the ship, the left hand side is called the port side and the right hand side is called the starboard side. So you see these numbers written here, these are exclusive to container ships. This is basically called a bay number and as you can see it's 49 here and 51 here and the middle one is not printed, it's uh, assumed that it's 50 and uh, it starts from here, this particular bay. It starts from here. See, this is the edge of the hole. This is the hatch cover. So this bay starts from here. End of 51. That's here. This is the hatch cover. This is the bay. 50. 50. So the uh, this is exactly 40 feet long, this bay. So that means uh, containers, uh, if any 40 feet container is loaded on this bay, it will occupy the entire length of this bay. Hence, this bay will be named as 50, bay number 50. But the, the bay number 51 and bay number 49, they are exact half of the ship, of this bay. So, say for example, this is the center of this bay and this will be end from the end of 51 till here will be 20 feet and from here to start of 49 will be 20 feet. So, two 20 feet containers can be loaded on this bay. Then this bay will be named as 51 and 49 depending on the container number. I will explain the bay row tier system in another video. Uh, let's move on with the, with the forward point again. 
this is a fire hose box so you find these boxes throughout the ship they are required for man fighting and i am responsible for their maintenance so this is a fire hose a nozzle a fire hose a nozzle and a fk or a spanner for connecting this to the hydrant so this is goes into a hydrant and then we can start the fire pump and then the water flows from the line from the pump to the fire line to the hydrant and to the hose and it comes out through the nozzle and that's how we fight the fire this is another fire hose box again so the bay number starts from the forward so this is another light boy but it has only a line attached to it so and as you can see this is a symbol for it a light boy with only a line okay, this symbol right here means that this hole the deck the inside of the hole is protected by CO2 system. CO2 is one type of fire fighting system given in the cargo hold and the uh, engine room. So what happens is when once if there is any fire inside the cargo hold, uh, you shut the cargo hold and then you you switch on the CO2 system and then they it, it will extinguish the fire. The CO2 will extinguish the fire. There are some people washing the deck here. So I can't go beyond this because otherwise I'll get wet. What I'll do is I will get up from the cross deck here and I'll go to the other side. This is the inside of a cross deck. So you can use this cross deck from going from port to starboard or starboard to port. And you can see these are the containers up top, up to seven feet, seven tier high containers are loaded. Right now we are fully loaded. We are going to Korea. The tier system, the row system, I will sort of speak in short. So this is a row system, I mean this is the row number, it starts from 00, zero exactly the center line, 00, zero, and towards the starboard side is odd numbers, 0, 01, zero, 03 and so on up till number 70. And on the port side it's even number, 0, 02, zero, 04 up till number 60. So that's called the row system. And the tier system is this particular container right on top of the main deck, the hatch cover is numbered as 80. Although many of the ships uh, generally they name the first container on hatch cover as 82, but on this ship uh, the numbering is 80. So 80, 82, 84, and so on up to as much as you can load. So that's how we identify a container. If I have to identify one container, say for example this one, I will first say this is the bay number, that is the 50 bay number. This is another bay, but just for example, as I showed you before, so say for example 50, then the row number, this one particular is 05, 005. And this particular is 80. So this container location will be 50, 05, 82, 80, sorry, 50, 05, and 80. 
that's the unique identification location number of the container let's move on so this is the starboard side and come to because they were washing on that side let's go ahead once again And these are called as beets and bullards, and this is a pear lead. So when you there are sometimes in some boats when the parts come over here, right over here, they come and they, then you pick up the line from here and then you put them here, the line, the cut line. So this is why this is uh, provided, and there is a motor also. You don't have to uh, pull the line by hand. You can use the motor. They will do the job for you. So, the fire box is on each side. You can find it throughout the ship. This is another light point. This right here is an embarkation ladder for that life raft over there. So that life raft is a manually thrown overboard type life raft. You have to just pick it up from its place and throw it overboard. And then once that life raft is there in the water, you have to unlash un un this thing and you have to make it over here. You have to put the ladder over here. And so if these are the uh, this thing, uh, eye given for uh, making part of the ladder. And then you put the ladder outside. Climb the ladder and you go down, or you can jump always. Okay, so moving on. Mechanical vents. This is the lever for it. You have to just uh, open and close by rotating it. And this is the vent. It will open, and close, and then it ventilation on for that particular space. This right here is a store. Uh, this is the oh sorry. This is a passageway. Uh, you can use this passageway to go from uh, this wood stove to food. Let's go. Here, see. If I use this and go, I will go directly to the other side. It's a little dark in here. Nevertheless. Okay, so this way, if you go, you will find the power thruster room. All marking are given over here, which is very nice. So I came out of the port side through the passageway and I guess they are finished their washing. So this is the forward part of the ship. Up top is the station, power station. And this is the underside of the container. See, I show you from here. Container right under, underneath the container. And Let's go up to the power station. This is a power station. 
navigation or sailing and this is how the sea look like out in the ocean this is what it looks like <sighs> this is exactly the center of the center line of the ship there's the mast up there and this is the exactly the center line of the ship let's look down let's see six bow cutting through the water beautiful isn't it properly see over there yellow thing that's the side light of the ship there is one in the port side this is the port side one and there will be another one in the starboard side This is the light. See the side light of the ship. This is the upper one, and the lower one. So it it shows to all the ships when a, when you see a ship from a way up a house, I mean from the bridge, you see its red light. This is the light you see. Okay. And this is just the fold. Just that is the windbreaker over there. Uh, and beyond that is the fourth position. This is the other side of the ship. And this is the sea. If you stand here, you know what happens. Anyway, this point right here is the bosun store, or also called the forward store. So generally, bosun is in charge of the maintenance and upkeep of this store. All the tools required for heavy heavy duty purpose, they are all kept inside the bosun store. So let's go and check that out. See from right from here, if you see there are some chemicals left here. That's the uh, valve for the bilge eductor here. Basically, the drains, the drains which are here, uh, they if there is any water inside, they it will be able to pump that out through those eductors. Okay, so this is a very interesting thing. Uh, it is called a bitter end. Bitter end is for the end of the anchor. See the chain locker. The, this is a chain locker. You saw the anchor on the on the forward station, both the anchors. So this is a chain locker port, and that's the starboard. What is a chain locker? Chain locker basically is the the chain of the anchor. The whole chain is going inside this. The port side anchor is here, and the starboard side anchor chain is the whole thing is going inside here. And the last end of that anchor chain is this bitter end. Is located over here. So all we need. So in, in this hammer is given for the purpose of uh, in, in any kind of emergency when the anchor is not. We cannot heave up the anchor. I mean, he, there is uh, uh, the anchor is somehow fouled or it is tangled somewhere in the in the uh, bottom bed of the sea or a river. So in that case, in by any chance, if you cannot pick up that anchor. So what you have to do is you have to take out this uh, hammer 
and you have to break this bitter end you have to basically you have to hit this part and with this hammer and it will disconnect the uh, end of that anchor chain and the anchor will just fall off from this uh, room here this chain locker here and it will get detached from the ship the ship will be free then that is a last resort that is a that is a very emergency uh, resort when you cannot heave up your anchor anymore you have to let go the anchor and then only that thing is used uh, so this is this is the opening uh, for this chain locker if any time you have to inspect you open this and you go inside and these are the spare ropes kept over here uh, for moving purposes there are some lashing uh, twist locks and materials left over here uh, spare ones that is a suez canal light when you cross suez canal they ask you to fix a light on in the forward part that's the suez canal light over there and the the light is very heavy you cannot lift it manually so you have to lift it through this uh, hatch over here the booby hatch ocean store booby hatch and there is a crane on the forward store that crane will pick this light up from here this is a life raft this is a forward life raft here it does not have any a hydrostatic release gate it is a manual type you have to pick it up and throw overboard and that's an immersion suit extra spare ones over here immersion suit and life jackets spares see these are the immersion suit spare and the life jacket spares how the ship looks like from a six sides see how beautifully it is cutting through the water sometimes i just come here and i stay here for 5 10 minutes i keep watching this Let's move on. This is the uh, starboard side railway, and this is what the accommodation looks like from the main deck. This is the aft part of it, which is the side. These are the bays. Aft of the accommodation it starts from 58, 57, 59, and the 58, and the middle one, and the 54 ends just ahead of the accommodation. 58 starts from aft of the accommodation, and it goes on up to bay number 7. Uh, the carbon dioxide bottles all are kept inside this room. You have to open this uh, the lock, lock of this door. You have to go down, and there will be all the 434 bottles inside. You can see. 
434 CO2 bottles kept stored in one room. These are kept over here. The gaps are opened and all bottles are connected. And the gaps are kept over here. This is the steering gear room. You see, this is the steering gear room. What happens inside is that the ship's main steering gears, the radar, the, the gear systems which make the ship turn are all inside here. Let's go and check them out. dummy used for you know scaring off people there is this is what we keep as dummies they look very alike human beings that's all chemical and these are the spare extinguisher charges left here to take fuel, this small bunkers or tankers they come alongside and the hoses are connected in these. These pipelines go to the ship's fuel tanks and that's how we take the fuel. That's the David or the crane for those hoses. So those hoses are very heavy so for picking them up we use that crane. There's another similar thing is there on the other side as well and this is the embarkation ladder very much similar to the one in the forward for those two life traps over there. So these two are 
manual as well as automatic type like that. This is called an HRU or hydrostatic release unit. So what happens is when when the ship sinks and by chance these life rafts are not thrown overboard manually. So what it will do is once the ship goes down by four meters inside the water, there is a knife inside this thing. It will automatically cut this part. This is called a V plate. HRU. It will automatically cut this rope, and this will get free. This sen house lid. This is called a sen house lid. It will open, and the life raft will fall, and it will inflate by itself. So this is called a strong, uh, strong point, and this is called a V plate. So this is how the life raft automatically inflates the ship is sinking on its own. And this assembly right here is the whole lifeboat assembly. That's the lifeboat, and this is its resting place or davit. This is the wire for lowering the lifeboat. It goes right up there. Either you can lower the lifeboat by this brake over here. This is called the brake. You lift it up, and the the lifeboat will be lowered slowly, slowly. Or you can use this wire to lower it. Motor and the wire is resting over here. This will come. This wire is only going and holding the life board. I want it to be lowered. And this is its motor. This is the manual system for it. If the motor is sometimes not working, then you can use this handle. Just have to plug this handle over here, and you have to rotate it. And the life board can be heaved up or lowered by that. Otherwise, it's only electrical and hydraulic. This is the life board. This is the A starboard side life boat, and if we go on top, we will see the life boat clearly. This is the life boat from. The inside of the life boat I will show in another video where I go to inspect it. So let's just move on to the upper deck. The light boat deck is a B deck, and this is a C deck. This is a very open space given here. Uh, I am not really sure why this open space is given, but uh, this, this is how it is. And these are the fans for the engine room. All the exhaust fans and the blowers, they are all inside here. That is the accommodation inside the entrance. You can come out and go inside through that door, and that's the bridge wing. This is called an emergency escape room. It goes right up to the bottom platform of the engine room. So, if by chance there is any fire and the doors are locked, you can use these stairs to come outside to the open deck. This is called an emergency escape room. One good thing I like about this ship is there is enough space for anything. This is the entrance inside the accommodation. Hoses are here as well. So this here is the hydrant. The hose from inside the box is connected to this hydrant, and you open this hydrant. Then, 
and you, the water passes from inside the, this line to the hydrant, the hose and the nozzle. Stay, my cabin is E deck like two inside here. This is the F deck. See the aft of the accommodation. This is the G deck or the captain's deck and on top of this is the bridge deck. The other side is the starboard side. That's the main side of the bridge. And now I'll go to the monkey island. sends out waves from these and this is the lights we call them Christmas lights the other light that's the exhaust back there Magnetic compass. It's, it's been covered now. But uh, the magnetic compass is inside this. And when you press the whistle, it will That was it guys, that was it uh, regarding the ship tour, the outside of the ship, the, the accommodation outside and there was this the main deck, the power station, the aft station, the bays, the cross decks, rushing bridge, the accommodation exterior decks, the bridge, Monkey Island and that was it, that was it all. I hope you liked this video and uh, I hope this gives you a uh, uh, overall view or an idea of the how the ship is how the ship is built from how it looks from inside the ship the outside of the accommodation and in my next video you will see the inside of the accommodation the different areas and uh, cabins and all so i hope this video was a little bit informational and entertaining if you like this video or you like it share it and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this so i'll see you in my next video and until then Stay safe and stay blessed.